Anita Darling. Today I decided to do a Corella Deville-esque makeup look. Everything. My camera is already dying and we have just started. Okay, great. Because I saw the movie and I want to talk about it. Um, so if you haven't seen the new Corella movie yet and you don't want me to spoil it, that's exactly what I'm going to do in this video, so don't watch this. But also, I kind of want to spoil it for you because I do think it's ridiculous that Disney makes you pay an extra fee on top of their service fee already to watch a new movie. Like, Disney, you have enough money, just put the movie on there. Um, I think that's ridiculous, but alas, I, I, well, technically, my sister Sam paid it. I didn't pay it. So I'm just gonna do this makeup look today, and this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna hold my hair back with my little devil horns. I figured it worked. Um, and the look that I'm gonna do today is actually inspired by a look that Kimberly Margarita, who I have talked about on my channel before, a look that she did on her Instagram. Um, so I reached out to her and asked her if I could do a look sort of similar, inspired by whatever you want to call it. And she said, of course, but she was actually inspired by another artist. And then when I googled Corella Deville makeup, there's actually a lot of makeup looks that look like this, so she definitely wasn't the first. So I was inspired by Kimberly but neither one of us are the first to do this makeup look. I'm not gonna lie to you, out of all the other ones that I looked at, no one else really did the, the 3D thing with the cotton and latex. Everyone else just kind of drew it. And I wanted to do like claw marks, like, like a dog, um, but I couldn't figure out the logistics and honestly it seemed like more work than it was worth. Speaking of 101 Dalmatians, I really want the edges on these wounds, if you will, to be very small. So I'm trying to get smaller bits of cotton than I would usually use. I just, I don't want this to be the kind of makeup look that takes me 30,000 years to take off because I don't think that's the point. So usually I would do this look um, over an eye or something, but I just really also want to do glam makeup. So it's not going to go over my eye. It's just going to be like on planes of my forehead and my chin and stuff. God, I can't get this open. Don't know if my camera will pick this up, but it seems like as soon as I decide to start shooting my backyard neighbor, Michael Myers, has decided to go back to sharpening his knives. <gasps> I finally did it! Can you believe it's already June? Like, we're gonna be able to start looking for Halloween stuff soon. Woohoo! Okay, so I... Why was I talking about the, about the Cruella movie in last week's video? Oh! Okay, I remember now. Because I did a video last week on makeup collections that I was rooting for but ended up disappointed in the MAC collection, and I mentioned the Corella movie, and I basically got a whole bunch of comments about the Corella movie, so I thought I should do a whole separate video on, um, sort of how I, what I thought about it now that I've seen it. If you're new to this channel, hi, uh, my name is Abby, and Corella DeVille is my favorite Disney villain. Why is Corella my favorite Disney villain? Because she is just fabulous, okay? She's like, not truly evil. There's nothing magical happening in that movie. She's just fabulous. She loves her fur coats. I just love her. She's like your rich aunt, you know? And please keep in mind, she never actually kills anybody in her movie. She tries to skin dogs, but does she actually succeed? No, she doesn't, okay? Um, so, I love her. I think she's funny. I think she's great. So, when Disney announced that they were doing a Cruella movie, I remained cautiously optimistic is the word that I continue to use. Um, because Disney has a habit of, you know, movies are either really good or they're really bad, and there's kind of no in-between. And Disney also happens to have a, um, a habit of casting A-list actors in roles that necessarily they probably shouldn't be in, but they're cast in because they're A-list actors. Like, as much as I love her, okay, there's no denying that Emma Watson, while her personality might be like Belle, because Belle is pretty much just the Disney version of Hermione, um... It will always bother me that she's Belle simply because they decided to make that movie a musical and Emma Watson is not a singer. And it just is even more jarring when you have her singing in a movie alongside Broadway legends like Audra McDonald, you know? And then it's just so glaring when then Emma Watson comes on the screen and she's like all auto-tuned and... I don't know. So to say I was cautiously optimistic about Cruella... You know, that, 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 that's how the feels were. And then they cast Emma Stone, and I said that Emma Stone is one of those actors that I often find plays roles the same way in last week's video. But I want to clarify that upon further thought, I've really only seen Emma Stone in very similar kinds of movies. Like, I've really only seen her in Zombieland, Superbad, Easy A, 
what's the other one? Crazy Stupid Love. And also, she's very much so a similar character, even as Gwen Stacy. You know, Gwen Stacy is very much just Emma Stone. I have no problem with actors who play themselves in roles. Really, there's like a whole, there's a whole bunch of actors that are famous that do that. I don't have a problem with it. I was only nervous about it because it's Cruella and because she's so important to me. Um, but it was never a, a worry about, you know, Emma Stone ne necessarily. It was just, could she do it? Now, I now notice, like, I didn't realize she was in that movie, The Favorite, and I haven't seen Birdman. So those are two, like, Academy Award-winning serious movies that she's done that I didn't even know she was in, and I haven't seen either of them. Um, so to be fair on Emma... I wasn't being fair on Emma. And I have to say, she ended up doing a much better job than I thought she would. She's very funny. She's very... Her voice is so good. Her accent is so good. A lot of American Hollywood actors, I find their British accents to be terrible. Not that mine's any better, but... And, and vice versa. When British actors play American, sometimes their accents aren't the greatest. I love Robert Pattinson, but... Especially in the Twilight movies, his accent, like... <laughs> really isn't the best. But her accent was so good. And she definitely has the right sort of deep, raspy voice as Cruella, which hadn't even crossed my mind before, to be honest. And she's got the right bone structure. So overall, I think Emma Stone's casting as Cruella de Vil, while I do still wish they would have cast an unknown, just because Disney has the resources to, like, really kickstart someone's career with that, um, she did a great job. Emma Thompson is uh, the queen of the world, as she should be, so there was never going to be any problems there. But of course, Emma Thompson was fabulous. I just realized she's also Mrs. Potts in the aforementioned Beauty and the Beast movie, so I don't know what she did to get that kind of Disney deal, but she really she did something. She did something, right? But overall, I think Emma Stone did a great job. Her black and white wig... I didn't love it. I felt, I thought, I don't know what, I don't know what the wig department was doing in this movie because I felt like a lot of the wigs didn't look very natural. Like her red wig when she's Estella rather than Cruella sits on her head much more nicely, much more like real hair than the black and white wig. But I don't know, maybe black and white wigs are hard to make. I don't know. Okay. I think I've done it. I think I've used liquid latex without making an absolutely massive mess of my entire life for potentially the first time ever. So I'm just going to let this dry a little bit because I have made that mistake in the past in the fast, in the past, where I start messing with my liquid latex, putting makeup on it and stuff before it's completely dried. So I just really want to make sure that I don't do that this time. And maybe if I give it time to dry, Michael Myers will just stop his metal grinding. Although I, I'm not going to hold my breath on that one. My head is so big and weirdly shaped that the devil ears are going to fall off. So devil ears, devil horns. Oh, there they go. So I'm going to have to just clip my hair back, unfortunately, because I can't, I don't trust myself putting it back on over this. So I'm just going to let this dry and change the battery and then we'll be right back to talk some more about the new movie. Okay, we're back. They are not dry completely, but I forgot that I also have to do my eye makeup. So we're just gonna do my eye makeup while, while these dry. So I did make mention of obviously both Emma's and I was gonna move on, but I forgot to just kind of give an honorable mention to the supporting cast in this movie because I do think Jasper, Horace, uh, Anita, and Roger, like all of their respective actors and actresses did phenomenal jobs at their roles and making them their own but also stay, staying true to the 1961 is that when the first one came out I think so um being true to those characters you know Roger is a character who is very near and dear to my heart obviously I half named my gecko after him and the other half named after uh, Roger from Rent um and he just he does a very good job of being sort of like you know, stern, but also kind of blubbery, and I don't know. I think he did a really good job. He's not in the movie a whole lot, but he did a good job, and then Horace and Jasper are just so great. They're like the best little sidekicks. Side note, I would love to get two little orange kittens someday. I don't know why orange, but my brain wants two little orange cat brothers from the same litter, and I want to name them Horace and Jasper, and I have always wanted to, to, to do that, and someday my dreams will come true. I think maybe just because they'll be little boys, they'll be, like, extra mischievous, and then when they do bad things, I can just be like, Jasper! Horace! <laughs> now, perhaps one of the best things in this uh, new movie is something that Disney always does a phenomenal job of, and that is, of course, aesthetics. The director of photography, the set designers, the set makers, the, the wardrobe department especially, like, everything about the Cruella movie is beautiful to say the least like stunning is more so an, an accurate word is what i'm thinking of 
I don't trust myself to do these wings. Right? So we're just going to take a... We're going to use a little wing sticker. God, the sets, it just has a very... I've never even been to London, okay? But it gives me a London in the 70s feel. And... The costumes. The costumes! Man, when Corella comes out of that garbage truck, and then her dress is all the garbage, that is the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. And then, of course, like, it's important to mention the Baroness's costume as well. Obviously, the focus of the black and white gown, or the black and white ball, is supposed to be Cruella's gown, but I don't know, man. I couldn't stop staring at uh, the Baroness's, like, black and white thing. I don't like her hair a lot in the movie because it's all just, like, up and together, and that's just something else that we're going to be talking about a little bit later on in this video is the Baroness's hair. I loved her wardrobe. Her costumes, ugh. There's, like, I, I feel like I can't say enough about their costumes in this movie, but I also don't know what else to say because I feel like I am not eloquent enough to fully explain the beauty behind the wardrobes in this film. And not only the costumes, but the or the makeup, too, because... Back to my freaking Mac Corella collab angst. Um, like I had said before, it looked like Cruella pretty much only wore blacks and grays in her makeup throughout the movie. And guess what? She pretty much almost exclusively wears a black and gray smoky eye. And you know what? The Baroness wears a sort of toned down version of that as well. So why does the eyeshadow palette from Mac look the way it does? Actually, what I really like about Corella's makeup as well is that sometimes when she's dressed as Estella and she like looks down you can see that her like her makeup is supposed to be like not really perfectly precisely applied and it's sort of you know it's sort of creased and it's just like a really messy like she threw on a gray eyeshadow and the lip color she wears as Estella is supposed to look like a nude lip I think like like there's nothing there but then when she's Cruella everything is so precisely done and put together and there's this like big great black wing that we're gonna try to do today i just love little details like that man so now that i put this gray shade from the transition palette i need to really fluff this one out hold on like that i want to take a slightly skinnier fluffy brush but only slightly skinnier and go into the the smoky shade because it's a black brown not a true black and then if I feel like I need to darken this up even more, then I will find a different palette. So right now, this is just kind of the shape that I would usually wear my eyeshadow in. I want to bring it out a little bit more to make sort of like an obnoxious wing shape and then bring it in. I have this weird patch over here where it doesn't want to stick. Okay, well, I wasn't going to put on liner, but I am now. Magic. My instincts keep wanting me to like pull this off my chin. Now that we're moving on to foundation, should we get into the topic that I don't want to discuss? So I loved a lot of this movie. I loved the look. I loved the performances. What did I not love? The story. Like, why does Disney do this? Like, they make these beautiful movies and they completely cheap out on the stories. Like, I'm so sorry, but if I was in school still, even just high school, and I turned in to my teacher a, 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 a Cruella de Vil origin story and was like, got it. Her mom was killed by Dalmatians. My grade 10 and 11 English teacher, Mr. Dommy, would have laughed in my face and then failed me. Because that is, without a doubt, the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. I don't care how they tried to tie it in. I don't care. Blah, 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 blah. I don't care. I don't care. It's stupid. Her mom was killed by Dalmatians. Who? Who let that through? Fortunately, that happens right at the beginning of the movie. So I was kind of able to try to mentally block out the whole ordeal by the end of the movie. Um, and that's why I think I was able to enjoy it. And I also had that spoiled for me on Twitter, like, the day before. I think I saw a tweet from YouTuber Abby Williamson, where she, like, <laughs> had screenshot a review and then tweeted the review. 
um, and it mentioned the Dalmatian's mom thing. I don't know that I'll ever get over that. Like, really? That just goes to show you that they just don't care about the story. They knew, they knew the movie was going to make money anyway. All the care went into the costumes and the all of that, and none of the care went into the freaking story because they decided her mom being killed by Del... Ugh. And I also, as much as I love dogs, like, I did not love her liking dogs throughout the whole movie as a story point because it kind of contradicts the way I think she acts about dogs in the 1961 movie because to me... Cruella is somebody who is indifferent about dogs. She clearly doesn't value their life, and she doesn't care about them, um, as seen through the fact that she later collects 99 puppies to then be skinned, which also doesn't make sense with Horace and Jasper because they also love dogs, and they're also just blind, blindly willing to do that in the original movie, whereas in this one, they love dogs, and even when Cruella jokes about skinning the dogs, I get it, that's a, a little Easter egg for the original movie. They're like, no, and she's like, don't worry, I would never... It's just, it's just frustrating because it doesn't make sense. And it's, it really, really goes against the sort of established Cruella de Vil canon. Anyway, as I was saying before, I was so rudely interrupted by my camera shutting off. It goes against the sort of already established Cruella de Vil canon of her not really giving a shit about dogs. For her to then have a lifelong dog friend. Um, and then three Dalmatians that she essentially stole from the Baroness in her house. And it just kind of doesn't make sense. And I understand that this movie is not supposed to be a, you know, an immediate prequel to 101 Dalmatians. So it's got to be like, what, 20 years or something between the two? I think that's sort of the idea. But, I mean, it just doesn't make sense, my dude. To me, uh, there were a lot of giveaways right in the very beginning of the movie that the Baroness was going to end up being... Cruella's real mom. Um, one of the main ones being that they open the movie with a scene of Cruella being born and you can't see the the woman giving birth to her really and it was like a very nice rit ritzy room. But I really felt like it was a missed opportunity to not have uh, the Baroness have the split black and white hair. Because like they have her in like 80% of the movie in like hair turbans and that sort of thing. And then even when we do see her real hair, the hairline is so weird that I assumed it was going to be like revealed to be a weird hairpiece wig or something like that, you know? Because they never really explained the black and white split hair. You know, the baby was born with the black and white split hair, so I really thought that when they did the reveal at the end, um, that the Baroness was her mom, I really, really thought they were going to tie in the black and white hair somehow. And then they didn't, and I was just, like, so confused because, I don't know, that seemed like an obvious, an obvious Disney thing to me that I was confused by. That one is a little less of a like, I care way more about the the dogs, the Dalmatian killed my parents aspect of it than the black and white hair. But I just wanted to mention that because I really, like, I was really sold on the, she's going to have black and white hair too. And it's going to, she's going to reveal her right before she, like, pushes her over the cliff. Like, I really thought, really thought I saw that coming. And then I didn't. Hey, that battery's on now too. Cool. Something else that I thought was weird, which is really just a little thing, but I did, I thought it was weird. And... Okay, well, let me just tell you. So, there's the three Dalmatians that Corella essentially steals from the Baroness, right? And I don't know the names of them, except for the fact that one of them's name is Genghis. And right at the very end of the movie, Horace makes a joke about how, I don't know if it was Genghis looks fatter or Genghis looks rounder or something, but immediately I turn to my sister and I go, oh my god, are they going to make Genghis have puppies? Which is fine. And this all would have been fine if it weren't for that line about the fact that they're Genghis's puppies. Because then, in the sort of post credit scene... Um, Genghis does have puppies, and we see Cruella drop off a male Dalmatian pup to Roger's house, and a female Dalmatian pup to Anita's house, those being Pongo and Perdita. So does that mean Pongo and Perdita are siblings slash litter mates? And then they go on to have 15 puppies, a litter of 15 puppies? Is that what you're telling me? Because if that's what you're telling me, I don't like that. I realize they're dogs, and dogs will be dogs, and it's not really the same as people, but... God, the inbreeding. I get that that was once again supposed to be a really cute little Easter egg, um, for the original movie, but I didn't like it. It was weird to me. And it's weird because I haven't really seen anybody else tweet about that. So I'm using the shade Caramel and Hazelnut from the Transition Palette. 
to sort of make the skin here look angry before we go in and do what we're going to do. So now I'm going to take this uh, cotton pad with some micellar water in it and we're just going to take the makeup out from the inside. This is where things are going to start to get a little tricky. God, something else I can't open. Okay, you know what? That was actually nowhere near as difficult as I thought it was going to be. Okay, so in this moment, it is occurring to me that I have no idea what Dalmatian spots look like. How do they differ from cow spots? We, we might never know. So they're really just slightly misshapen circles. So we're just going to go for it, I guess. I need the mirror closer. I'm so sorry, guys. Now I just need a little bit of blood in there, but we're not going to do that right now because I don't think I have a silicone applicator over here. So now we're going to put on lashes. For the longest time, for some reason, I refused to buy a new thing of duo glue. And then I finally had to, and let me just tell you, brush on eyelash glue is where it's at. Like, why was I using the squeeze tube for so long? Why was I such a butt? Why was I so unwilling to change? These Shein lashes are the biggest lashes I own. And that is why they are the lashes we are wearing today. So after this, we're just going to do a little bit of under eye. We're going to do some heavy contouring. I actually toyed with the idea of um, painting the outside of my face black to sort of, I don't even know what just fell, to sort of really exaggerate the Corella DeVille face shape. Ultimately, I obviously decided against it. But I did think about it. Man, I have like a big fur coat that I'm going to put on at the end of this video. And I can't promise you that it's a fake fur coat. I bought it at Valley Village. Um, but it's so hot. And it's already like 400 degrees in here. Um, so that's not going to be fun. I just can't decide whether I should contour with my regular contour stick and just go really ham. Or if I should use the NYX cream color palette. Because I have them both here. Woo! Okay, we are now on the third battery of this video. I don't know where I was when it cut off, but I'm sure I was just talking out my butt like I usually am. So what we're going to do right now, um, is we're gonna, I'm going to try to speed things up a little bit. And we're just going to do my under eye. I want to use this really pointy little brush. And I'm going to use the lightest of the gray shades. Okay, and I want to put mascara down there and eyeliner. Now we're going to move on to my contour. I want it to be crazy. So we're just going to like... And because I can't do the front thing on this side, we're just going to like one of those. Like the contour isn't harsh enough. Well, 
What if I do this? What if we go into Mocha and then Ash immediately after? There we go. Look at that. Okay, so now we're going to go into my scab blood. This is the actual Ben Nye scab blood. And I'm going to take my little silicone applicator. We're just going to take little bits. Look at that nice. Oh, I just got scab blood on my beauty blender twice. Okay, great. Love that for me. Okay, so we're going to put the lid back on this. And then the last two things we need are highlighter and lips. So the highlighter that I pulled out to use and the lipstick that I pulled out to use are both actually from the ColourPop Disney Villains collection. I bought the whole Cruella de Vil kit. So this is actually not my favorite highlighter I own, but I figured I had to use it for this video. So this is the Cruella, you idiots, you fools, you imbeciles, uh, super shock cheek. So we're just going to take it. It's a little too dark for me, and that's honestly why I don't like it, I think. Um, but this foundation is a little too dark for me. Yeah, see, so that's the highlighter. I just think it's a weird color choice for Cruella because it's a little bit orange. But, I mean, they work with Disney. I didn't, so. My only red lip liner that I own is uh, Mac Cherry, so I'm just going to use that. I'm trying to make my cupids bow a little extra sharp. And then this is the ColourPop. Villains lipstick in Cruella. Anita, darling. And so this is my finished Cruella Deville and Special Effectsy inspired makeup look. I was inspired by Kimberly Margarita on Instagram, who was inspired by someone else. And there are a bajillion looks like this, but I wanted to do one anyway because. I wanted to talk about the movie and some of the things I liked about it, some of the things I didn't like about it. Um, and I love Cruella, right? Like, I had the shirt. She was kind of my hair inspiration. Like, I love Cruella. So I really wanted someone, that someone being you, to talk about the new movie with. So I really appreciate you hanging out and watching this video with me today. I've been through three camera batteries. I filled up this memory card, and it's been two hours. <laughs> so I really appreciate you hanging out with me. Overall, I thought the movie was better than I expected. I think I had the right idea, being cautiously optimistic, um, but at the same time, um, it left a lot to me to be desired in the story department. I mean, come on, her mom was killed by Dalmatians, really? But it was beautiful, it was well acted, the performances were great. Overall, it could have been worse, it could have been better, but it, I, like, I liked it. I really, I, I quite enjoyed it. I just really struggle with her mom was killed by Dalmatians. That sounds like I don't know, it sounds like a Wattpad fic or something. But overall, I'm keeping it as it was good, the soundtrack was good, it was beautiful. There are plot points that I thought were stupid, but, I mean, that's kind of to be expected with live-action Disney movies these days for some reason. I don't know why that is, but I don't know. They try to make too many Easter eggs to the original movie, and then they just 
get lost in the middle somewhere. I don't know. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I cannot wait to take this coat off. It's like 40 pounds and I'm sweating my butt off. Uh, please subscribe to my channel if you have not subscribed already and I will see you next time. Bye!